Hey, everybody, this is Kiz Arnie, now known as Sinbo D. Please stay tuned to Beyond the Ropes. Just thought I'd let you know what was on my Mia Zion. Are you ready for the best step out of your life? Give me the hell, give me a yell. Everybody, yeah. everybody, yeah. let's get into it. Yeah. Get stoned, get it started, get it started, get it started. Let's get it started, let's get it started. Let's get it started. Let's get it started. Welcome, folks, to another online interview with Beyond the Ropes Radio, and tonight with our special guest, former WWE SmackDown star, Kazarni. Welcome hey, to the show. Stuff. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Excellent, excellent. Well, let's start off in no better place in the beginning. Um, how old are you when you first started to watch wrestling? Um, I'm old. I remember watching Roddy Piper <laughs> and Hulk Hogan as it happened, so right. if you can date that way back in the day, I was a fan since... War settle the score. Oh, interesting. Uh, mentioning Hogan and Piper, were they some of your uh, mentors or some of your favorite people to watch? Yeah, Piper was. I mean, I, I mean, of course, Hulk Hogan, but I was always sort of rooting for the bad guy. I was a deranged little kid. Ah, there you go. <laughs> right on. How old um, are you? Uh, how old were you when you knew you wanted to become a pro wrestler? I always like. For me, when I was a little kid, it was about wrestling and comic books i wanted to be spider-man i wanted to be roddy piper i wanted to be jake the snake you know and then sometimes i wanted to be a green goblin too so i, I like the good guys and the bad guys right. but it's an interesting interesting mix for sure so, you know, <laughs> but wrestlers I'm sort of a yin yang guy i've got my good moods and my bad moods so you know like my good guys and my bad guys right right you have one without the other for sure um what wrestlers had the most influence you uh, <clears throat> excuse me influence on you growing up I guess uh, the number one influence, uh, as far as wrestlers go, would be Jake the Snake Roberts, oh, nice. who, as it turned out years later, would be, you know, my sort of mentor slash teacher, Very which was pretty ironic and apropos and scary all in one shot. <laughs> cool. um, I remember, I can remember vividly being a little kid, uh, sitting there with, you know, my friends, and watching Ricky Steamboat get his brains DDT'd out under the concrete. And I remember all the other kids were like, oh my gosh, what, he just went too far. Like, this is, this is unbelievable. And I just remember kind of thinking, I want to be that guy. Right. You want to be so, the guy bashing the brains or getting the brains bashed? I, I wanted to be the guy on the giving end of the DDT. Okay, there you go. <laughs> all right. So uh, what age um, did you uh, start training? Uh, I started training in 99. I trained at Sully's Gym, uh, the same place that Edge, Christian, uh, Swinger, uh, Chris Stratus, um, Joe Legend, Rob nice. Fuego, lots of guys came out of that gym. Sounds like um, it. And then I learned from various teachers along the way. I learned a lot from Al Snow. I learned a lot from Rip Rogers, uh, Steve Kern, Dr. Tom Pritchard, Jake the Snake. And then, I mean, everybody that I'd ever worked with, you know, right. I'd always got something from. Like, I'd always walk away with some sort of tidbit of knowledge. And so who were the main trainers at Sully's? Were all these people at Sully's? Or? Uh, the main trainers, um, originally it was Sweet Daddy Seeky. Right. And when I got there, the main trainer was Ron Hutchinson, which I was there for a brief stint. And then I just hit the road and started learning from anybody and everybody and every show I could get my hands on. Um, I was always, I was lucky right from the start because, I mean, I guess half lucky. Um, I would travel and, you know, sleep in my car, and I would just go to ridiculous lengths to get to these shows. Like, I, my travel schedule has always been kind of like a Bugs Bunny cartoon. You, see, you know, when you see him loop to looping all over the, the U.S. <laughs> map and what have you, yeah. that, that would be me. So when I would get to the shows being a weirder looking guy or what have you, or a bigger guy that I would end up, you know, getting the privilege of working, you know, whatever legends they had brought in for said show, just so it, you know, didn't look like, you know, a King Kong Bundy or a Jerry Lawler or a Rick Steiner or whoever it was 
was just getting fed some glass jaw. Like I looked like I had a fighting chance. So, <laughs> and I did. So I really made hell on a lot of those guys, even though I learned a lot from them in the process. But I have beaten on my share of legends, which has been fun throughout the years. Yeah, I'm sure you definitely learn from everyone that you've been in the ring with as well, I'm sure. Absolutely. But, I mean, the thing about the, the legends is that's exactly what they are. You know, they know a thing or three and, yeah, yeah. you know, keep your eyes and ears open and you just might learn something. So, as you were saying, being all over United States, Canada, even England, um, where has been your most memorable place to wrestle? Uh, my two, I mean, I don't want to like, I don't want to, you know, tick off every city between, you know, here and there, but I think that my two favorite cities to ever wrestle, well, actually, I'll, I'll say my favorite city that I've wrestled in was Memphis. That was my favorite territory to wrestle in, and I loved wrestling in England because, I mean, the English fans are insane. I mean, they shoot soccer players over there for right. F's sake, you know, so, I mean, they're a pretty rowdy crew. Uh, and Memphis is just kind of more my style of wrestling, if given my choice. Um, and the fans, I mean, now you have to picture, you know, Memphis being a very working class, very God-fearing audience. And when you put a devil guy with long hair and eyeliner in the ring, I mean, that's pretty trippy <laughs> to right. somebody from Memphis. Definitely. So I would always elicit a pretty crazy response and... I usually would wrestle as a villain in Memphis. Actually, not usually, always wrestle as a villain in Memphis. Um, you know, depending on my mood, good guy or bad guy, and, you know, the, the promoter's request, of course, um, I would be in a good mood or a bad mood. But uh, Memphis always had me sort of on the meaner side of things, and that was just a, a pretty fun deal. Cool, cool. So a little bit going back to your training, you got your first match, and I believe it was with uh, Apocalypse in Ontario, Canada. Uh, who was your first opponent, and how nervous were you? Uh, my v- actual very first opponent was a guy named Tony Mack, who was this uh, uh, sort of a, I mean, he's a nice enough cat. He was a, sort of a, a rock wannabe, like a Dwayne Johnson wannabe. Um, some, something between The Rock and Potsy Weber, I guess, would be this guy. <laughs> there you go. He was somewhere in that vein um it was fun i mean i had fun i mean we cut our teeth together it was pretty cool i ended up um kind of i picked him up i don't it wasn't really even some technical wrestling maneuver but i picked him up in this sort of makeshift suplex and stuck his head through the roof of this place and then began to beat him over the head with a hunk of ceiling (laughs) and that that was always fun when i look back in hindsight remembering that was a pretty cool deal in my first match Cool, cool. Um, speaking of Pretty apocalypse, messy and... speaking of apocalypse, are you aware they're making a comeback in May? No, I am not aware, okay, but I now just, I guess I am aware. I guess so. That's I was just asking because um, from what I've seen, they're going back and uh, getting stars from past. So I was just wondering if they had been in contact with you, basically. Um, I've been in contact with a lot of uh, independent organizations. I have not been in contact with Apocalypse. I am not opposed to working for Apocalypse. I mean, they gave me my right. start. You know, I don't have any ill will to them. I'm, I hope they succeed, and I'd be happy to work for them. If they're paying, I'm playing because exactly. uh, you know I love what I do, but I gotta eat and pay the reasent. So uh, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, yeah. But if they want to fly me from uh, parts unknown here to Toronto for me to scuffle with uh, some new wrestler or some legendary wrestler, that would be just a okay with me. Right on. Um... Let's fast forward a bit here, and after uh, honing your craft in Ontario, as you already mentioned, uh, you've been over to England. Um, how did the wrestling differ over there than they did Canada or the United States? Uh, well, it was kind of, it's a little more old school there. Um, they like uh, like the old sort of the British chain wrestling, the catch is catch can. Right. And it is very memphis in their flavor, like they like characters and what have you, um, which is kind of a double-edged sword for me because... I mean, I think in, in most ways people consider me a character, and in, most, and in a lot of ways I am a character. But, I mean, these tattoos don't rub off. You know, this two-foot-long hair and this foot-long goatee doesn't just... I don't put it on a nightstand at the end of the day. Right. I mean, this is all me. If I was a wrestler or a lawyer or an astronaut or a plumber, I would be plumbing or astronauting with a long goatee and tattoos and crazy costumes and whatever. It's just me. Right. So, I mean, people say character. Um, no, it's not a character. I mean, it might be me with the volume turned up, 
but it is still me. Like, I am a legit wrestler. I am a legit carnival circus performer. Like, I do all the weird sideshow stuff. Um, all that stuff is not a, you know, a concoction of Vince McMahon or anybody else. Right. That is, that is all me. So you, do, you say right now, yeah, you do a lot of sideshow stuff. Now, is that still what you do, or was that in the past? Um, I had worked with Carnival Diablo, which is uh, a sideshow um, right across Canada. Uh, that's where I that was the sideshow where I had cut my teeth. Um, I did all sorts of stuff from bending iron bars in my teeth. I'd like to see Mark Henry try that one. <laughs> Um, human dartboard, which that's kind of self-explanatory. Just aim for the wings, not the spine. Um, and my big finale, aside of, you know, twisting balloon bunnies, my, my big finale would, they would put me in an electric chair and juice me up. And, uh, I would light a torch with the electricity off of my tongue. That was my big finale at Carnival Diablo. Um, when I got to... WWE, Vince wanted me to go brighter, sort of Rob Zombie meets Doink the Clown. Right. So we shot we shot the vignettes with uh, Ward's Traveling Sideshow Circus, uh, based out of Florida, and we, we shot that in Pennsylvania, which was totally fun. I mean, those guys were awesome. It was just cool. yet another carnival experience for me. And as of now, leading into more carnival stuff, you are looking at the new guest star of the Jim Rose Circus versus Jake the Snake Roberts tour, which kicks off in June 18th. Wow, interesting for sure. Now, um, are they just dates in your area, or are they going to be across the United States? Um, I know where the first date is, but I'm not allowed to say right off the bat because it's a surprise promotional thing that they'll unveil soon enough. Um, but yeah, it'll be across the states. It'll be, I think, uh, about a two-month tour, and then it will just progress from there. Cool. That's um, that's as much of the scheduling as I'm allowed to talk about at the moment. Right. Um, uh, it's looking to be pretty pretty cool. Is there anywhere we can check this out yet, or not yet? Um, you can check out for updates on all three my spaces: Jim Rose, Jake the Snake, Roberts, and myself. Cool. Um, Jim Rose Circus is the MySpace official. Jake Roberts is his MySpace, and the original sin with two ends is MySpace. Excellent. My MySpace. My MySpace. Yes, sir. So, anyways, after uh, sliding through uh, England and carrying on over there, now uh, you come back to Canada, and while wrestling the indie scene, uh, you got a few tryout matches with the Fed back then, the WWE. Uh-huh. Um, who are some of the people that watched and critiqued your matches back then? Who are some of the people that what now? Uh, that watched and critiqued your matches back then in the 2002, 2003 era? Uh, um, I had wrestled Val Venus, Bob Holly, guys like that, Al Snow. Um, Al Snow took a, uh, a good interest in me, and he really had a hand in, in pushing me towards WWE. He was the guy that invited me to OVW in the first place, which at that time, I guess a lot of indie guys, myself included, sort of had a prejudiced taste in my mouth for the developmental system, just right. thinking, you know, cookie cutters and what have you. And, mm-hmm. and I guess I'm sure it was a two-sided thing. You know, the, you know, the contract guys, I'm sure, are probably looking at indie guys like a bunch of filthy gypsies, so I could see both sides of it. But uh, if it wasn't for Al Snow, you know, inviting me to come down there, I probably wouldn't have. Okay. But that's where I ended up getting hired out of, so, you know, I owe Al Snow a whole bunch. Excellent. Um, what kind of experience did you, or knowledge did you gain from doing your dark matches or tryouts? Um, I learned a lot of, you know, what WWE wanted and the difference between, you know, wrestling for WWE and wrestling for independent uh, organizations. You know, there's different trains of psychology that you take into the ring with you. You know, okay. just the same as... You know, in MMA, there's different, you know, you have a different strategy as far as, you know, your wrestling or fighting or what have you, a ground guy or a stand-up guy or what have you. You know, it's different styles and different territories. Just, you know, like wrestling in Memphis is different than wrestling in Detroit that is different in wrestling in, uh, uh, you know, Newark that it is 